The Everglades is a flowing river with its headwaters starting just south of Lake Okeechobee, deep within the peninsula of Florida, flowing southward through millions of acres of grass, and eventually its waters are concentrated into small creeks and rivers that flow then into a transitional zone in Florida Bay, dotted with thousands of islands, and then eventually flowing into the Gulf of Mexico. These creeks, rivers, and mangrove islands create a fantastic environment for exploration and fishing. In this video, we'll be looking at juvenile tarpon that live in the small creeks and rivers, and then also snook that inhabit the mangrove islands. When I go down to the Everglades, I usually stay for several days and camp out at one of the many islands. On certain days, you'll have a lot of wind, and when that happens, it's a great time to head to the backcountry to go into the creeks and rivers to look for tarpon. Cruising to the backcountry from the front side can take a long time. Some days I spend up to 45 minutes to an hour from my campsite to where I'm going to fish. So be sure to allow yourself plenty of time and also plenty of fuel to get you there and back safely. Even though the wind was blowing 15 to 20 miles an hour, in this protected creek, the water was as smooth as a lake. And for a February, I couldn't complain a bit. The air temperature was in the high 70s, the water temperature was around 78 to 80 degrees, and it was a bluebird sky. From my experience with tarpon, they usually like the clearer and cleaner water. The water that I had previously gone through was pretty muddy, but this section of the river was pretty clear, so I slowed down my boat. The reason why I did that is that I don't want to spook any fish or run up onto fish, so what I'm doing by going slow is it gives me a chance to look out way in front of the boat to look for activity either for bait fish, mullet rolling or jumping on the surface, or tarpon that might be rolling. And there it was, exactly what I was looking for, a rolling tarpon. Once I stopped, it didn't take me long to spot the tarpon through my polarized sunglasses swimming slowly underneath the surface. As a matter of fact, there you could see the one that spooked when I made the cast. But if you notice, my retrieve is wrong here. I'm doing a jerk, jerk, pause, jerk, jerk, pause. And that just isn't producing a strike. Here on my next cast, I change up my retrieve. I go from the jerk jerk pause to a continuous swimming motion like a mullet would normally do and I almost get an immediate strike. The fish makes one jump and throws the lure but that's not so bad as you'll soon see. Here I'm having to realign my bait on the hook before my next cast. And then my favorite sound is screaming drag. Never get tired of the sound of the gills rattling as the tarpon shakes its head from side to side and the sound of the body slapping the water as it re-enters. With juvenile tarpon, I prefer a light drag. That way, when they do their head shakes and their jumps, they won't generate enough pressure on the line to break it. With bigger tarpon, you need to bow your rod tip to them so that you don't break the line off.
to ensure this fish stays healthy, you want to get the hook out and the fish back in the water as soon as possible. Those big eyes miss nothing. In case you're interested, this is what this tarpon hole looked like on my side and down imaging sonar. My guess is, is that the tarpon lay just on the lip of this drop-off waiting for mullet to swim by. During this trip, I tried several other locations that had similar characteristics with good luck. In this particular case, the tarpon threw the bait right back at me. This particular tarpon decided to railroad around a corner and when I jumped on the trolling motor to follow him, he decided to double back at me. This is a tough job for a tall guy with no coordination, trying to fight a fish and adjust a camera all at the same time. This tarpon is going to have the last laugh. He's about to give me a good shower here in just a second. Even after the fight, he had plenty of kick and I certainly didn't need another shower. Next up, we're going to leave the creeks and the rivers and head out to the front side where all the islands are and try our hand at some snook fishing. My first stop is at a small cut between two islands. It's pretty much towards the middle of the day right now and the sun is pretty much directly overhead so I'm trying to go back into the uh, area underneath the trees where there's some shade. That's usually where the fish will hang out. From my experience in this type of area the best type of retrieve to go with is a jerk jerk pause because most of the fish in this area I believe feed on shrimp and the jerk jerk pause imitates that type of action the best. It doesn't take long and a trout shows up. And back to his home he goes. From the same spot, I pulled out several mangrove snapper. These are good to eat when they get to be over 10 inches long. Next up was a small snook. Even though it's small, it's still a fun catch for me. Where I live in Northeast Florida, we don't get too many of these acrobatic fish. Being that I'm catching a lot of small fish in this location, I'm going to move. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move further out into the front side, closer to the gulf, where there's deeper water 
and stronger currents that I believe will support bigger baits that will draw bigger fish. The strategy worked. Before too long, I was hooked into a monster snook. Again, a light drag is important so you don't rip the hook out of the snook's tender mouth. This fight took over 15 minutes. Before it was done, the fish had pulled me about a quarter of a mile from where we originally started. He tried to get me underneath the mangroves on both sides of this pass. I had to use a trolling motor to get him away from the mangroves, but when I did that, he headed all the way over to the other bank. The fish was over 36 inches and I estimated that it weighed somewhere between 20 to 25 pounds. <laughs> I took plenty of time to revive this large snook to make sure that she would survive to fight another day. Thank you for watching. If you enjoy the outdoors and fishing, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, please post them below and I'll get back to you.